Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in this day, this Sunday morning, which is Father's Day. This Sunday morning, a time for us to celebrate, uh, to honor, and to remember fathers. Let's pray. Holy God, we come now in the strong name of Jesus to give you thanks and praise this day, Lord, to lift you up and acknowledge you in all of our ways and tell you how thankful we are that you are our Heavenly Father. God, I thank you for the gift of fathering and for all the fathers uh, in my life that have been and um, all the fathers, God, that have are around, so surrounding all of our children. God, these days we need father figures. We need uncles. We need godfathers. We need everybody on hand, God, to help us to bring up our children in the way that they should go, God. We trust you that you would continue to empower all fathers and even mothers, God, who are playing the role of father and mother in so many cases. We just trust you. Now, God, this day, I ask that as I decrease, you would increase. Speak through me to give someone, some father, someone who is uh, raising up a son and even a daughter, God, give me the words that would inspire and encourage them to keep going and to trust God. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray and we all say amen. I want to use for a thought this morning, uh, trust God. I simply want to remind us to trust God. But in, in particular, I want to remind fathers to trust God. And, and so I want to invite us to turn, turn with me to uh, the book of Genesis. Turn with us to Genesis, the 22nd chapter. And we're going to read selected verses, the 22nd chapter. And I'm reading the New International Version. And it reads as follows, uh, verse number three says, Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. When they had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place, with, place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I, while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. And the two of them went up together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they had reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He, he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay him. But the angel of the Lord called out to him and said, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear the Lord because you have not withheld your son, from your son, your only son, from me. Abraham looked up, and there was a thicket. There in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said on the mountain of the Lord, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And again, I want to use the topic, trust God. I want us in the midst of a difficult in uncertain times to remember that it's imperative that you and I continue to trust God. It's imperative that we look to God for, for who he is in the midst of times of darkness, in the midst of times of, of sadness, in the midst of times where we're not sure how to press forward. We're not sure what or where or how it is that we're going to come out of these times. But one thing is for sure, God is still able. God is still with us and God is still the only one that has all the answers. So on this Father's Day, I want to invite, I want to remind, I want to exalt all fathers to remember to trust God, to remember to teach your sons to trust God. 
And so as we look at this particular text, we see that Abraham is taking his son Isaac. And, and, and we, we remember the story of Abraham and, and Isaac and how it was that Sarah, during that particular time, uh, she, was, she thought she was barren after so many years. But then God blessed them with the son Isaac after they decided uh, that they could not put it, do things in within themselves. So when they had this son Isaac, and now God has given Abraham the instructions to take the son and go on the mountain. Mountain, and there he will tell him where to go so that he could sacrifice his son to God. And I want to remind us that all too often God will give us directions. And, and sometimes we hear the directions, but because it's not what we want to do or because it's not, it doesn't seem like it will be the right thing to do, then we, we, we wait or we, we hesitate or we just flat out ignore. But today I want to remind us, trust God. Trust God in the midst. And so as Abraham is taking his son, he's taking two of his servants, and they're going up. And as they get to the place, he tells the servants, stay here while I and the, the boy, or I and the lad, some of the translation says, I and the lad will go up and worship. And then we will come back. I want to use for, for just a point number one to remind some fathers that Every now and then, you need to take your son and separate from the crowd. You need to take your son and, and, and go and, and be private with your son. I don't care if they're two or if they're 20, but you need to, to, not, to know that you can't take your son and be among every, the crowd all the time. You can't teach them all they need to know being in the crowd. You can't talk to them about things they need to, to learn about all the time, being in places with other people. But sometimes you've got to separate and, and take your son and be alone with them. Take your son and, and talk to them about the things that, that you talk to a young man about and train them in the way that they would go. Because the Bible declares if you train up a child in the way that they should go when they're old, they will not depart from it. And all too often, we're not talking to our children. All too often, we're not training them. We're not reminding them that, that they are important, that they're in, to be encouraged, they're to be inspired, they are to look within to see the greatness. All too often, we forget that when we don't talk to them, somebody will talk to them. So I want to invite us today to remember to talk to your sons and even your daughters. Talk to them and take time to, to separate yourselves and, and let, let them understand the importance. Even Jesus had to separate to talk to his heavenly father. So I want to remind us, separating from everyone is important to talk to your children. And then as they went up, as they were on their way up, I noticed and this caught my attention in verse number six. It said, Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and he placed it on his son, Isaac. That caught my attention simply because why would he put something that would seem to be heavy upon the son? But, but I, I want to remind us that the, the wood was the fuel for the fire. Abraham carried the fire, but he put the wood on his son. I want to invite us to understand that the wood represents the spiritual implications of all too often what we need to put on our sons. We need to, to put on them the things that help them to be responsible. We need to put on them things that help them to be accountable. We, we need to put on them things that help them sometimes to have correction because in this life there, there are going to be times that you need to be corrected. There are going to be times that people will look to you for accountability. There will be times that people will look to you for the responsible or the responses of a man. And so if you aren't, aren't the father that is training up a child that, that they are to be that man, then guess what? You're going to have a, a sad time with men that have not been trained to be men. So we need to be reminded that the wood itself is a material that allows a spiritual connection between people and the divine. Wood is a natural symbol, and it is considered to be the most valuable material around the world. When it comes to trees in general, we can say that it is usually symbolizes, it usually rather symbolizes wisdom and knowledge and longevity. So I want to remind us that that all too often we have we put one thing on them and forget about something else. So today I want to encourage us to to put the wood of oak, the oak wood on them, which provides strength. Put the wood of cherry, the cherry wood on them that would help them to relate to others. Put the wood of the pine wood on them so that it can help us help them to know about the peace that God will grant unto them. 
put the wood, the walnut wood on them that gives them the confidence or the mental ability. Put the olive wood on them that reminds them of to be inspired and to inspire others. Put the willow wood on them so that they understand to, that emotions are good. And every now and then remind them that it is okay for a man to cry. Jesus wept. And we all we raise up our boys telling them, don't cry, you're a big boy. But help them to know that in all things, it works together for the good of God. So as we put the wood on them, we're putting on them the, the responsibility or the, the act of teaching them how to be responsible young men and young women. Because it might be that you're a father that says, well, I don't have a son. But the, the idea is to be the kind of parent that teaches them to trust God. Teach them the, 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 the vastness of who God is and what God has for us as people of God. And so as Abraham put the wood on his son and his son asked the question, he said, Father, I, I see the fire and I see the wood. I'm carrying the wood as a matter of fact. And, and the fire is with Abraham. The anointing is with Abraham. And he's asking this question. And Abraham simply says to him, son, God will provide, or God himself will provide a lamb for the burnt offering. I want to remind us as we're trusting God and in times when we can't we can't know which way to go and what to do. Be reminded that God will provide. Be reminded that when, when we walk, when we walk forward, knowing that we, we don't know how we're going to get to the next thing, we are to trust that God is with us. See, Abraham didn't know what was going to happen. He just knew to be obedient. He trusted God enough to be obedient, and he followed instructions in putting the wood on his son. He carried the fire, or the, the fire was within him uh, to go forth and do what God would have him to do. And simply because he, he put the wood on his son, which represented the fuel his son would need to be a man of God, he carried the, the, the fire. And, and let's just say that the, the fire was representative in, in the fact that he was carrying and anointing for obedience. And he wanted to pass that on to his son, but he thought he was giving his son up as a burnt offering. But he all he knew was that the Lord was going to provide some way for him to do what, he, what God had asked him to do. I submit to us, when God asks us to do something, just be obedient. Just trust God enough to be obedient. And as they continued on, and Abraham bound his son to the wood. He bound him to what he carried up. And once he had the knife and was ready to sacrifice his son or to slay his son, then the spirit of the Lord spoke to him and said, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay a hand on the boy. He said, do not do anything for him. He said, now I know that you're not willing to withhold your son, your only son, from, from the Lord. He said, but I have provided a ram in the bush. So I want to remind us today that God provides the ram in the bush. God provides all that we need when we remember to trust him, when we remember that, that in spite of how it looks, trust God anyway. In spite of who's with us, separate and, and take time to talk to our, our sons and tell them who God is. Tell them why they should trust him. Tell them that he is the one that, that guides and, cor and corrects and he's the one that instructs them in the ways that they would go. And as when they grow up, and especially in the perilous times we're facing now, in the perilous times that we're facing, our young boys will be able to know I've had time with my dad or with someone who was like a dad that could talk to me and remind me that the Lord will provide simply because we trust him, simply because we put the wood with the implication of the wood on our, our sons to allow them to know that God provides wisdom. He provides the inspiration. He provides everything that is needed. He provides. And what is the wood? What would represent the wood that we would give our children today? Last point, and then I'm done. All too often, we want to give them a device. We want to give them something to play on, and it's okay. We give them something to learn on. But I want to remind us, give your son a book. Teach him how to read. Teach him to understand what is in the book. 
Give your son a pen, a pencil. That's wood, church. Give them the book that's made of the paper. And then give them the, the pencil and the paper and allow them to write their thoughts down. Allow them to, to, to write down what it is that they want to be, what they see themselves becoming. And I know I, I said start maybe when they're two, but no matter how old they are, give them the tools that would remind them and help them to know that God is one that they can trust as they walk this journey in his name and for his glory alone. And the people of God would declare, amen, amen. And amen. My faith will stand